It's another day and another video in this 30 Days of Takers series. I hope those of you that have been watching these videos so far have enjoyed them. I can say for the most part, I have certainly enjoyed recording them. We're on day number 10 now, 10 of 30, about a third of the way through. I'm going to do this. A video every day. That's the goal, that's the aim, and that is the commitment to you. And today's topic, I'm going to talk about one that I get questions about quite a bit in a variety of different ways and have gotten questions about in a variety of different ways over the years, and that is, who should The Undertaker have faced at WrestleMania? Now, you're thinking about a guy whose career in WWE has stretched three decades, a guy that has wrestled 20-plus times at WrestleMania, you, know, you would think that he's pretty much wrestled everybody that you possibly could at WrestleMania, but the reality is he certainly did it. And in some cases, there were notable, truly big-name guys that he never went off and faced one-on-one -on -one at the showcase of the Immortals, which is WrestleMania. So wanted to take some time today to talk about who are some of the guys that Undertaker should have faced at WrestleMania but ultimately never did. Now you think about it, you know, this is a guy that wrestled God three times, Shawn Michaels two times, wrestled other guys like Randy Orton and John Cena, so Taker is the one question breakfast club, Daniel Bryan. Uh, but there's been all types of opponents over the years. But, like I said, several that didn't happen. Number one, I think most notably, is going to be Sting. I even remember in the hype and the build-up to WrestleMania 27 back in 2011, like a lot of people thought that this was going to happen. That if it was ever going to happen, this was going to be the moment, this was going to be the time. And apparently it became really, really close to happening. And it's one of those ones that you spend so many years hearing about, talking about, hyping up about, and then it never happened. And it's just kind of too late and you're never going to get it to happen, apparently. And that sucks. Now, what I wonder is, is what version of Sting versus what version of Taker you would really want? Like in an ideal dream match type of world, I would have wanted Crow Sting of the late 90s versus that Ministry Taker. Like to me, that would have been the best combination of factors, best combination of characters. And these are the things I used to think about as a wrestling fan, those dream scenarios, those hypotheticals, like, what would happen if you'd have been able to have a WWF versus WCW show back then? Just imagine the type of television you could have done over a month or two months, pumping up Crow Sting versus Ministry Taker. Would have been absolutely fantastic. But nonetheless, even later on in their career, like two old warriors, two old lions, like there would have been an appeal there. And I promise you, especially with the way WrestleMania 27 went, you know, Taker Triple H was easily the match of the night, but we re remember the end of the era, end of an era match more at 28, the Hell in a Cell match in Miami um, with HBK as a special guest referee. We remember that match a whole lot more. Sting versus Taker would have absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt been the match that stole WrestleMania 27. That's one match I would think that most everybody could agree we never got, that we should have gotten, it would have been nice to get. Uh, the next one I would say would be John Cena with the streak still intact. Sure, you could talk about Taker technically did face John Cena at WrestleMania and he squashed him in about two and a half minutes and it was wonderful! And it absolutely was. But just think about it like this. Imagine after 2012, Taker's now 20-0 and 0 at WrestleMania, you know, John Cena's just lost to The Rock at WrestleMania. Imagine if he spent several months or a year building up to John Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Because a few things to keep in mind then. I know WrestleMania 29 the next year, they went back and Cena just had to get his victory over The Rock, blah, 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 blah. But imagine this. Taker's 20-0 and 0 at WrestleMania. He's never lost. This is John Cena in still the peak of his power of the decade of doom. That was his reign of top the WWE. He hadn't really started doing the movies and the outside projects yet. Now you get to WrestleMania 29 in New York, and you're talking about The Undertaker 20-0, John Cena, 
oh my God, could you imagine the suspense? Oh my God, could you imagine the reactions? Oh my God, could you imagine the fear for people like me that John Cena is going to be the one to ultimately end the streak? So while yes, we got that match at WrestleMania several years too late, like this was always the obvious one to me and I think for a lot of others too. Like why you never did Undertaker versus John Cena at WrestleMania when it really mattered? I will never, never understand. I, I just won't. And, you know, that's kind of a theme. There are other top guys that never faced off with The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Maybe that was by design because you wanted those other top guys to win. Uh, but there are other opponents that I could sit there and say, you know, they never faced him at WrestleMania, and they should have. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Like, you certainly could have made a strong argument for those two to face off at a mania. The Rock would certainly be another guy. You never got The Rock versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Um, you want to talk about one where you actually had a lot of history and a lot of story there? Imagine if you're talking about King of the Ring 1998 and what happened between Taker and Mankind. Think about it like this, though. Imagine if you changed the dynamics a little bit and you didn't have Kane versus Taker at WrestleMania 14, and instead you did that Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania, and it was Taker versus Mankind. Like that WrestleMania would have went down as one of the iconic ones of all time. I could look at Mankind, Mick Foley, and say beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's one of those things that, yeah, they wrestled a lot over that two to three year stretch, but it feels like certainly a missed blown opportunity that those guys could have wrestled at WrestleMania and they never did one on one. They did not. So um, Kurt Angle, I think, would be another one you would look at and say the chemistry those two guys had the ring in the ring were very good. You know, it had been a high-profile match for Kurt. Like, that's another one I would point to when I say, you know, I kind of wish he would have been able to have that match. I kind of wish he would have been able to do that. Um, I would also say The Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt with the streak still intact. Like, I'm taking a slightly different spinner approach here, you know, because admittedly, um, you know, the fact that some of these matchups came after the streak was over, like, it, it diminished the appeal. It diminished the value. It just, it was a lose-lose type of situation. You know, like, squashing Cena was a nothing. Like, that was no big deal. That was fun. Because at the end of the day, it wasn't going to hurt Cena. It wasn't going to hurt Taker. Like, it, it didn't really matter. You know what I mean? But... Bray Wyatt facing off against him at Media, but then coming back and beating Bray Wyatt, it's like... Taker's already lost the streak, so why is he beating Bray Wyatt? So you put over Brock, but you're not putting over Bray, the guy that's actually going to be there full-time for several years. And then why is this helping Bray? You, you, you get where I'm going with that. Another guy that you could have certainly made an argument that he should have faced off at WrestleMania with was Vince McMahon. Remember, it was Vince McMahon that he had the Buried Alive match. What was that, at Survivor Series 2003? That led to the death, finally, of Human Taker. That led to the rebirth, the regenesis at WrestleMania 20 of the Dead Man. Like you could have made a strong argument there at WrestleMania 20 that you know I, I realize they built Kane into that and it makes sense and all of that certainly worked. But that could have been a spot where Vince would have been the guy that they would have had the match. Um, but when you think about Taker, like you could always come up with different guys that he could have faced off at against at WrestleMania. You know, all types of dudes. You could have made an argument early in his career, like, maybe he should have beat Hogan at WrestleMania 9. Maybe he should have beat him earlier at WrestleMania. Um, you know, there are lots of guys. But you think about over the years, all the guys that he did work with, from the Kevin Nashes to the Sids to the Canes to the Triple H's to the freaking Ric Flair's, Shawn Michaels, Triple H's a couple more times, Randy Orton, Batista, Mark Henry, you can Edge, you can go on and on and on. Like There are certainly guys that I would have liked to have seen him face at WrestleMania. There's no question. And I think to me, the single, what feels like two biggest missed opportunities of all, we're not seeing Taker and Sting at WrestleMania 27. I think beyond question, that feels like a missed opportunity for all parties involved. And the other one to me is WrestleMania 29, with Taker at 20 and 0, and Cena coming in his career, in the midst of that decade of doom, like that's the one that there would have had everybody by their cocks and their cunts. That's the one that would have riveted everybody. When you want to talk about wrestling and what it is fundamentally at its core, 
It's about emotional investment in the characters. It's about emotional investment in the stories. It's about suspension of disbelief, at least if nothing else, getting immersed, getting sucked in. And you want to talk about something that would suck all the fans in? That, that would have been it right there. Um, so with that, I will close out this video and turn to you and ask you, who do you think are some of the people that you wish Taker would have been able to face at WrestleMania over the years and didn't? Who do you think he should have faced and they should have made it happen because they had the opportunity and they failed to do so? I'm kind of curious to see some of your responses. Again, check out all the other videos in this 30 Days of Taker video series. This is day 10. We got, what, 20 more days to go. We're going to do this. Smash that subscribe button. Click the bell so that way you're notified of all the other videos in this series. And I will see you tomorrow with another one, folks.